Hello, hello, hello. A very happy Monday to you. How you doing? We are just about live. Not quite yet. So Peter Young wins the award for being first in this morning on the live chat. Hello to you, Peter. Nice to see you there. And YouTube have a dark theme. That sounds good. I like themes that are not so hot on my eyes. Screenflow I use to edit my tutorials sometimes, and I notice they've released Screenflow 7, and they've gone dark as well. They've got a dark theme, so I'm, I'm loving all of this. David Silk's in. You're not repeating, 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 repeating. I can confirm that. You are not repeating. No repeating. No repeating. No repeating. Absolutely no repeating, David. No repeating. No repeating. No repeating. No repeating. No repeating. Renato's in as well. Don LeBlanc, nice to see you there. Cato's in, and he's got the spanner. Yes. Hawks there. Hello to you. We're getting going in a minute and a half, so stand by to go live. That's a strange feedback, isn't it? <laughs> Let's get rid of that. Just messing about with the mixing desk. No repetition whatsoever. Isabella's in. Hello. Uh, Dazing. Joe is back. Johnny Five alive. <laughs> oh, it's so exciting. Right, here we go. Stand by for the one minute countdown. We are going to go live very, very soon. got it right here the show for audio producers this is music radio creative live but it's not just exclusively for audio producers it's for you if you're a voiceover artist if you're a podcaster if you're somebody who's making music or aspires to make music or radio jingles or production or anything like that this is the show for you and just to let you know if you're brand new to the show uh, a few house rules first and foremost i do mention comments yes yes that's right i do mention comments you can even see them behind me over here um, but I only mention them every 15 minutes during the show okay every 15 minutes so at 15 minutes in at 30 minutes in and at 45 minutes in and usually at the end as well uh, if there's enough time but obviously you know what time is like time flies especially when you're having fun Today, on the show, we're going to be making music beds in Logic Pro X. I'm not talking about real advanced compositions, because I know a lot of musos watch us, and uh, there are a lot of people with a lot more musical knowledge than I have. Um, so I'm going to be using my basic musical knowledge and a few tips and tricks and hacks uh, to use Logic Pro X or Logic Pro 10 or just Logic Pro uh, to create some pretty decent music beds that you can use in your productions, whatever that might be. Maybe you're designing your own radio promo, maybe you've got a radio show and you need some funky music beds uh, to sound good and you don't want to use library music or you don't want to go and buy something from somewhere, you just want to hop into an editor and create something. Now let me preface this by telling you that Logic Pro is only available for Apple Mac, so I apologize wholeheartedly with my full heart uh, to <laughs> Windows users. You can look for some Something like Ableton or FL Studio. Uh, you can do similar tricks to the tricks I'm about to show you uh, in this show. 
I don't really apologize that much because uh, Macs are fantastic, in my opinion, and uh, I love Logic. In fact, uh, Logic, I think at the current moment, costs about $199 even less in British pounds, if you happen to be watching in the UK, uh, something like £139, I think. And just one of the synths alone in there, Alchemy, that I use a lot, <laughs> is, is worth more than Logic Pro. So it's a no-brainer if you're Mac owner. Um, also, you know me uh, possibly for Adobe Audition tutorials. I do a lot of them. I love Adobe Audition. It is my primary door, number one. Uh, but number two is Logic Pro, and I use it to, to design bits of music and stuff like that. So... I'm going to show you some, some tips and hacks and bits like that. But first of all, let's chop over here and take a look over here at the community. Now, if you have not joined the Music Radio Creative Community, I highly suggest that you get in there. I'm going to post the link in the uh, the chat on YouTube right now at youtube.com slash musicradiocreative. Uh, go and join up if you're not already in there. Uh, it's a fantastic community. Uh, loads of musical people, audio production people, voiceover artists, radio hosts, DJs and podcasters are already hanging out in there uh, and chatting and exchanging ideas mm. and I'm, I'm loving chipping in where I can as well so uh, community.musicradiocreative.com uh, that is the promotion for the show now I'm going to get into Logic, which you can see is just behind me over there. Um, so let me start off by showing you this. This is Logic pretty much when you start up. Actually, no, it's not. When you start Logic, uh, you go to New, uh, well, I'm going to close this and not save it. And then I get a little prompt. Um, well, actually, I, I used to get a prompt. Usually you get a prompt asking you what kind of project do you want, and it will set everything up for you. Uh, but as it happens, it's just asking me what kind of track I want, so I'll have a software instrument to start. And this is where the fun starts straight away, because we can go in and start jamming away around and making really cool stuff uh, using what is known as Apple Loops. Now, most musical uh, pieces of software come uh, with loops and bits and bobs that you can use. I know Ableton does, and I know I know even Adobe Audition comes uh, with loops, although it's a bit of a secret. Somebody posted in the community about that over the weekend, that uh, actually Adobe Audition does have a package of loops you can download if you're a customer. So that was a pretty cool discovery. Um, but it's really easy to find over here in Logic. You just click that button there. It looks like a loop the loop or a roller coaster. And there are all your loops. Now you're able to search these loops uh, and then start using them. So uh, let's first of all go into the genres and we'll go into uh, something I like. Like, for instance, let's start with something like, uh, oh, why not Electro House and see what we've got. Now you'll see, uh, actually, it's funny. <laughs> I'm just going to drag this over a bit because it's clashing with the chat the apple loops there you go can you see the apple loops now chats over there and apple loops over here that's the icon to get into apple loops um, now, all of these loops here uh, with blue icons are audio files, recordings of things. But, and I don't know if we'll find it in Electro House, let's look in another genre, maybe Tech House. Uh, some of the genres actually have loops. Let's go to all genres for a second. Uh, with green musical notes icons. Can you see that? Uh, so let's just play something like this. So that's quite funky, isn't it? And something like this. These are beats, which are really nice. And this, this is music, which is very nice. So I might say, okay, we've got eight beats here of a wonderful string dream. Let's drag that in. Now, if I drop it down here instead of into my original track, I will get a nice looking MIDI file. Thank you, Don LeBlanc. Wow, wow, wow. There it is, a, uh, the first super chat of the show. Super excited. Amazing way to support uh, these shows, by the way. Don LeBlanc has just donated $5 to the show. Uh, glad to offer this pittance today, Mike and Isabella. Not a pittance at all. Very, very much appreciated and all really helps uh, to keep this show going. Um, so um, what it does when I drag these green uh, musical icons over, um, you get like the MIDI information. So if I just zoom in, you can actually see, look, the MIDI notes are in there, which is fantastic. Now, if I was to drag this same file onto, say, an audio uh, file there, sorry, that's not audio, that's a software instrument. Let's create an audio track in Logic uh, like this and just delete this one over here. Right, if I drag the same one into an audio track, you see you get the waveform information. So 
it's amazing uh, what you can do with these uh, green iconed uh, Apple loops. And then you've got the uh, the blue icon ones, which only work in audio form. So if I drag it here, it says not an audio track. Uh, drag Apple loops, d drag green Apple loops here. So it doesn't work. It'll only work there, okay, as music. Okay, so what have we got? Let's go with the MIDI right now. And we've got String Dream that sounds like that. Well, it's rather dreamy, isn't it? And I can just pull this out a little bit. So make it up to uh, two bars uh, and have a listen. There we go. No, we just want two bars. And if I hit the enter key, boom, my playhead goes back to the start. So it will just loop round. This is an Apple loop. Now, in a second, uh, and later in the show, I'm going to show you how to um, make your own music in Logic Pro X, even if you're not musical. There are some really cool features you can use uh, to start creating music beds. But to start with, I'm going to use Apple Loops, and I could pick a drum beat uh, from the Apple Loops, but Logic actually has a really cool feature, and they've shouted about this uh, very recently, actually, at uh, Apple Keynotes. Uh, the drummer, right? If you select a drummer in Logic, it will create you an electronic algorithm drummer, but not one that sounds like a computer. It's like a real drummer. And in the latest update that I think came down the wire about two weeks ago, they gave us three new drummers. Let me show you what I mean. When I add in this drummer here, see, immediately you've got a drum beat in there. Now, uh, you see this tempo here is 140 BPM right now. It's quite fast, actually. Um, the drum will also be created at 140. So you can hear it's matching up. Obviously, it's not the right kind of drum beat for that music at the moment. But what I can do is if I go over here to my library in Logic, I can see that I'm using Mangus, the electronic drummer. So if I wanted to go for something uh, a little more in tune with that uh, string acoustic guitar, I could go for percussion. And you can see I've got Isabella, Quincy and Finn. Who do you have hope for? Who should I use? <laughs> shall I use Isabella? She does Latin percussion. Let's try Isabella out, shall we? Uh, there we go. That's just loading her information. And there it is. Nice. Let's turn the music up. Nice. And on goes Isabella with her maracas and clangers and bits like that. Uh, rather cool. Uh, it describes Isabella as inspired by multicultural sounds from her hometown of Miami. Isabella plays fiery, dynamic rhythms on Latin percussion. Uh, so it's great. And as you can see here, we've got beat presets that we can choose. So already, using an Apple loop and a drummer, we are starting to create a song. But... You might say to yourself, hang on, mate, you're doing all this stuff and it sounds fantastic and you're using loops. What's the copyright situation on this? Am I going to play this on my radio show or on my podcast and get sued by Apple because I'm infringing copyrights? Well, let me show you this. If we go over to the official Apple website, uh, they actually have a section, a rather lovely section here, about using royalty-free loops in GarageBand. And by the way, these loops come in GarageBand, which is free with Mac. So perhaps before you go to Logic Pro, GarageBand is kind of like Logic Pro Lite. So if you've already got a Mac, you should already have GarageBand. So what I'm teaching you and showing you right now will work just in a lesser form with GarageBand or GarageBand or however you say it. Um, so, uh, the licensing you may use, Apple and third-party audio loop content contained in or otherwise included with Apple software on a royalty-free basis to create your own original music compositions or audio projects. You may broadcast and or distribute your own music compositions or audio projects that were created using audio content. However, and this is where you have to pay attention, individual audio loops may not be commercially or otherwise distributed on a stand-alone basis okay so if i was to just solo this and give you this and say oh what's happened to it let's go back to the start if i was to just like give you this as a download apple could sue me right because i'm just giving you a loop on its own so don't do that but once you start combining those loops with other things from what i understand and i'm not a lawyer so this is not legal advice uh, then you start to create your own composition 
And they end off uh, this by saying you can't repackage it as whole or in part as audio sample sound effects or music beds. Uh, so you can't repackage it. That means repackage it and resell it. But you could use it as a music bed, from what I understand, on your own show or uh, in your own creation. And they end it with the friendly line, don't worry, you can make commercial music with GarageBand and Logic Pro. You just can't distribute those loops as loops. OK, is that loud and clear for you? Good. Okay, so hopefully that makes you feel at home and easy doing this uh, and creating your own stuff. So we got something like this with uh, Isabella's drumming in the background. Now I can change Isabella uh, to uh, Little Havana if I want, and it'll change the theme. And you can actually move this around uh, and change the algorithm of the drumming so you can get different drums. Hear how it changes? So that's got really complex or softer, simpler. So that's good. Um, but then what you can do, if you pull in an Apple loop that has MIDI information, you can make that Apple loop sound completely different, completely different. And let me show you how that may work. So for instance, uh, if I go to this string acoustic guitar here, it's using the EXS24 synth. Now, as you know, if you've watched a previous live stream of mine, uh, I'm a big fan of alchemy. Now, if I go over to alchemy, we're going to get more of the dance music sound. And as I'm a fan of dance music, I can't hide that, I'm going to uh, start playing uh, with something. Let's see what we've got here. Let's go for uh, trance. It's my favorite genre. Uh, trance, and we'll find something nice in here. So we might need to just uh, skip through this and uh, loop over the start of this audio. So I'm just going to uh, zoom this out a little bit. And um, probably Isabella's drumming won't be appropriate anymore now. You see it's going dancey, so we'll go for electronic. And we'll go for uh, uh, maybe Julian. Let's try Julian. We're changing the drummer. That's OK. Don't worry about that. And let's have a listen. Ooh, that's, uh, that's beaty now, isn't it? Crikey. Uh, so let's go back into our uh, guitar here. And we're going to alchemy. And we're just going to mess about with this. So I think the drum's a bit loud. Let's pull that down in the mix. And then we can have a search through uh, more of uh, the, uh, the trance presets. that's quite cool isn't it and uh, we can just check if we're totally happy with uh, Julian's drumming we can maybe change the preset here Abitha Sunrise that'll be chilled out so that's the current preset but we could go for this oh nice I feel like I'm on the beach now with a cocktail awesome and you'll hear how the drummer breaks out into various different little bits all on the beat which is amazing this is going at 140 BPM I'm wondering if that's too much Let's take it to 128 and have another listen. Okay, cool. So that's what we've got so far. And uh, we've got analog bubbles and we've got Julian as well drumming away. Uh, now, I want to make this uh, a music bed uh, for my latest promo that I'm creating, say. So we need to make sure it's 30 seconds. Before I show you that and get deeper into creating this musical composition, uh, we'll take a look at your comments because we're 15 minutes into the show. Uh, and then after the halfway point, I'm going to show you a few other tricks not using Apple Loops. Uh, so what have we got here in the chat so far? It's nice to see you uh, uh, tuning in. Uh, so we've got uh, Don LeBlanc, David, Peter Young in. Uh, we've got Caddo with a spanner moderating and uh, and telling all those jokes that uh, lighten up our Monday as well. So thank you for that, Caddo. We've got Isabella as well. Uh, Dezang, uh, we've got Joe in on the chat, Mr. Mega Ray. Radio UK. David Lewis is in as well. Uh, definitely need to change my YouTube name uh, to Tom to fit in with the real name thing. Been watching some previous streams, but this is my first time actually live. Awesome. Very happy to have you along on the show. Connor, I'm on holiday in Barcelona and I'm still watching. Originally from the UK. That's awesome. Actually, I'm very, very envious right now because 
we have a, a, a grey overcast day today in the UK. It's really no good, the weather here. And yes, I would love to be in Barcelona. Uh, Lewis is there. Hello. Good morning to you. Nice to see you there from the USA. Maro, hey, what's up? Uh, what else have we got? Ollie, shout out to you, Ollie. Uh, Renato, super cats for super chats, referring to uh, Caddo's post in the community. I have seen that. Uh, yet to reply, I need to get in and to reply to a few more posts. Uh, what else have we got here? Ollie's loving the loops, but uses FL Studio. Well, that's a good alternative for PC, for sure. FL Studio is good. Uh, Ableton is kind of like a cross-platform one as well. Uh, what else have we got here? 101 Gion. Uh, so what is this? Well, welcome along. This is uh, where we mess about and play with audio production and make things. Uh, I'm Mike from Music Radio Creative. Ollie, I had no idea it would turn into a MIDI loop. Thanks for letting us know. It's my pleasure. Uh, that's kind of why I do this. Also, I do this just because I get excited about audio. <laughs> Don got the reverb loud and clear. Good. And... Uh, what else have we got here in the chat today? Uh, hi, are you on an iMac mic? Says Pete. Uh, yes, I am. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, yeah, that's awesome. Brilliant. So keep the comments coming in. I will mention more of them during the show. Very, very happy to uh, shout you out if there's... um. Anything you want to ask, by the way, I am here to help as much as I possibly can. Uh, so, yeah, just get your comments in on the chat and I'll be more than happy to, uh, to comment on what I'm doing or uh, give you any examples uh, specific maybe to what you're working on. Uh, and of course, you will see the comments always appearing up here. So in real time, they will appear. Uh, Bojan's in as well. Nice to see you, Bojan, uh, watching on the live stream right now. So uh, say I want this to be 30 seconds. Well, you see, logic doesn't uh, typically show the time information up here at the top. So how do we get that? Right click and go into customize control bar and display. And then we need to change the LCD to show instead of beats and project, we want beats and time. See how now we get the uh, the time of uh, everything. Uh, so what I can then do is uh, let's switch off these loops for the moment so I've got more space. Uh, I'm just going to drag this out. Actually, let's drag this out and find the 30 second point, which is there. Okay, great. So really, I want to be ending my bed around there to make it a 30 second one end it with a big powerful impact at the end. So that's 28 seconds and by the time that impact that I'm going to place there on beat 1 of bar 16 uh, it's just going to decay out and by the time the decay ends around there uh, we're going to be we're going to be done and that's going to be a 30 second music bed. So um, what have we got so far? Well we got this as you know. And then I can loop this out if I want. So this is my next uh, loop. Uh, and this started life as a guitar, but now it's a synth. So that is playing now. Uh, now maybe I want to design the end of my music bed. Uh, so back to Apple Loops. And uh, if we have a look, uh, let's have a look in um, instrument sound effects here. And they've got all kinds of cool sound effects here that you can place in. Particularly good uh, for production when you're making like radio or podcast music beds uh, because you can really find what you want. And look, here we go, boomer effects. Uh, now, often I get asked, Mike, where do you get your sound effects from? And I design a lot. I also, um, we also use our music radio creative libraries as well. But Apple Loops have some pretty good stuff. <laughs> See, that's not too bad, is it? Um, so what I can do is bring in this boomer effect here and place it at the end, say, for instance. And let's have a listen to how this bed might end. Obviously a bit loud there. And I might just drag this out a bit more to see. No, that's not going to work. Let's move that in. And let's move that boom down in volume. Uh, let's move it down a bit more. So there we go, and uh, that decays. So that could be the end of my music bed. And then I can just go nuts, really, and drag in whatever I want. So um, if I want to go into the genres and look at something like, uh, I don't know, Electro House and see what we've got here. If I start playing the audio, this is the best thing about Apple Loops, uh, they, will, uh, they will actually start playing in sync with my production. So I can kind of hear if the, um, the loop is going to work or not with my music bed creation. So let's uh, start from the start and then start playing some of these loops. No. 
Oh, <laughs> maybe. That's quite cool, isn't it? So this garbled riff was awful. <laughs> doesn't work, but this, this works quite well, doesn't it? The other cool thing about Apple Loops is they have all of the information in here, the beats. Uh, they also have a, a heart section here where you can heart them. If you really like a sample, you can go and use it later. Uh, they tell you the tempo, the BPM, and the key. And what it will do is um, when you drag it in, if it's in the wrong key, it will actually transpose it automatically for you into the right key. So this is what I'm saying about why Logic Pro is so good if you're uh, new and you just want to get in and design some unique beds for your stuff. So you don't want to have what everyone else is using. You want to have your own stuff. This is just amazing. I, it's, I, I, I love it so much. Um, actually, let's before I drag that in, let's create a brand new uh, track, which we do by clicking the plus up here. And we'll have an audio track here, create, okie dokie, and drag in this loop. Now, this one's nice because this goes on for quite a while. Let's uh, pull this out and uh, have a look. Now, I think this actually goes on up until, whoops, loop it out up until here. So let's hear how that fits with the whole picture. And we can bring up the mixer as well, because I think that's a bit loud at the moment, isn't it? So let's bring that down in the mix. So that's just looping over and over. Um, I mean, what we could do is say, for instance, uh, let's pull this in and not start this until this point. So the bed starts off uh, like this with a slow start. Coming next week on the big MRC show, we're doing five live streams. Join us. That kind of stuff. Now, if I wanted to, I could, for instance, uh, take this, uh, alt and then drag, just like Adobe Audition, actually, alt and drag, copies. And thank you, I have to do a big shout out to David Silk, who told me that alt and dragging waves in Adobe Audition copies them without having to right click and click a, a menu. So very cool hack and also works nicely in Logic. Um, so uh, what you can do, if you want, is uh, go in, let's have a look at this one, for instance, and I could do some, some different edits. So let's have a look at this. Um, right, what I can do on this is I should be able to, uh, this is the area I want to go to, transpose. And then I can transpose this up or down a little bit to take it into just another uh, area. So have a listen. This will go up. And let's see whether it fits with the music. Maybe not. Let's bring it down. We can bring it up. But the further you transpose uh, music, uh, this is transposing over here. And the further you do it, the weirder it's going to sound. Like 36, that'll sound really out. <laughs> Sounds like 8-bit music. If you want to create 8-bit music, uh, maybe a good idea. But let's uh, let's get rid of that. So uh, a little bit about transposing there. Let's just see how this ends. Actually, I think I want to drag that out just a little bit further to there. And the same with that. And then we're going to get a, a full picture on the music. Right. Nice, and that ends bang on 30 seconds, so you really uh, can't argue with that as a music bed now. 30 seconds, boom, you are out of your music bed. Uh, back into Apple Loops, and let's see what else we've got that could potentially work. I might pull in that house clap, actually. The house clap topper sounds quite nice. So uh, let's pop that in as well. And we can bring that in later. So actually what we could do is we could have this nicely building up. So if this goes out to here and we don't bring in that little rift until a little bit later. So let's bring that along here. 
and there. And now have a listen to how it sounds. Actually, I just need another audio track. Here we go. And I'll move that boomer effects up there. So we've got some space here. Okay. Let's have another lesson. Actually, the boomer effects should be somewhere else, but at the moment it's on audio four. Let's bring that down a bit. And have a listen. Yeah, I thought that was too loud. Bring that down to 12. And uh, with the house clap topper, a bit loud. Hang on, it's going all over the place. That's on the uh, the Boomer channel now. So uh, let's uh, play with that over here. So there we go. So uh, in full, that's starting to build up quite nicely. Uh, then we could go to uh, something else. I mean, there are, there are other bits and bobs in here that I could show you, like jingles, for instance. Jingles are fantastic because uh, they, they have a kind of radio sound to them already. So plenty you can do with these loops, and uh, you know you can you can go on creating things forever and uh, and changing stuff. Particularly, look for the instruments with uh, MIDI information because that means you can really uh, have some fun with an Apple loop that was originally created in one instrument and change it into another instrument, which I think is. Uh, really really pretty good and we're coming up on halfway through the show and I did want to uh, change things and mix things up a little bit at the halfway point and get into some uh, production actually painting on your own musical notes and chords so we could do that we could start up a new file and if you've got anything that you would like to post in the live chat right now wherever you're watching uh, be sure to post and I'll do my best to get around to answering some of your questions on the live stream anything you've got to ask uh, I am happy to to answer or at least help or point you into the right direction so uh, we'll leave this behind and we'll go into uh, new uh, and we'll close that project not save it and then we're going to go back in and create something with a software instrument so create all right we are all set to uh, to start again it always preloads alchemy that's the one <laughs> that's the one i choose uh, so let's have a look here what have we got uh, gosh, my goodness, it is difficult to keep up with all of the live chat, but I do uh, very much appreciate all of your conversation. Uh, Bruno, hi, I'm from Peru. Wow, nice to see you over on Facebook Live. If you're watching on Facebook right now, let me know where it is you are watching from in the world. Would love to know that. Uh, we have got uh, David Silk, who also is a trance fan. Absolutely love trance. Uh, what's the difference between pizza and a drummer? A pizza can feed a family of four. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's dropping the jokes. He's he's on fire today. On fire. Uh, what else have we got? Uh, do I like Cosmic Gate music? No. I'll have to look up Cosmic Gate now. Mm. Sounds interesting. I do know of Tomorrowland, though. I would love to uh, go to Tomorrowland. Actually, I'd like to go to... Uh, what's the name of the big one they have in Las Vegas every year? All the big EDM DJs play. Do you know it? Name it. Name it in the chat. Uh, ED... ED, EDC, EDC Las Vegas. Uh, that's uh, definitely a, a bucket list to attend. Um, anyone from Australia? Uh, plenty from Australia on the live chat. 
Uh, Lawrence Diggs, would you post the link for the Music Radio Creative Community? And uh, Caddo is obliged, which is really nice. Uh, yes, the link to go to if you want to join in with the chat outside of this live stream is community.musicradiocreative.com. Here it is. Uh, it's active 24-7. Uh, as you can see, lots of people in there and posting, sharing projects, uh, show ideas, uh, microphones, best mixing consoles, uh, audio production tips and tricks. It's all there. It's for you if you're an audio producer, voice artist, podcast caster, radio host, DJ, uh, whatever it is to do with audio, uh, join in over at that URL, community.musicradiocreative.com. Oh, David's on an iPad today. <laughs> which uh, it's, uh, it's tough to type so fast on there, isn't it? How do you turn the drummer track into a MIDI loop for editing? Ooh, that's a really good question. Lawrence, I'd, I'd most likely need to uh, look that up unless somebody else uh, knows how to do that. Um... Because there, yeah, the drummer thing is is something a little bit new in Logic, and I haven't played with converting that into MIDI. But that's an extremely good and valid question. Let me just see if I add a, a drummer, which I'm probably going to need for this next section. If I add a drummer in, glow stick drummer. Here's the glow stick drummer. This is for you, Lawrence, in the live chat right now. Uh, if I double click it, yeah, it brings up this this drummer area here. But I don't know if there's any context menu. Oh, look, convert to MIDI region. Would that be it? Let's, there you go. Hey, that's fantastic. That was easier than I thought it would be. Uh, so the answer is, let me just undo that. The answer is generate your electronic drummer and then right click convert to MIDI region inside Logic. And boom, you've got all the MIDI information. There's the hi-hats. Can you hear a hi-hat? Can you hear a kick? Give me a kick. There we go. Got a kick. Lots of kicks. Uh, and then we've got the snare and the clap as well. And you can do whatever you want with that. You can move that around and change it. But I think Apple's algorithm is actually uh, pretty good. So I'm going to put it back. But it's nice to know that that's possible. And certainly you might want to do that when you're messing about and making music. Um, so thank you to Caddo for posting all those uh, wonderful links there in the chat. Uh, Caddo is uh, there along with Isabella moderating today in the live chat if you're here for the live stream. Uh, what you first had was a major to minor change sounded best. Thank you, David. I appreciate that. Uh, Ru Runemeister, does Logic Pro X work with a virtual keyboard? Ah, funny you should ask that. Funny you should ask that. Like one of these, you mean? Yes. Wow. Yes, it does. It's nice, isn't it? So, um, yeah, I mean, this is the one I got. Uh, have a look at that. It's the Ikai Professional LPK25. And you can indeed play uh, MIDI information in there. Uh, I could show you. Uh, record. And there's my MIDI information, as you can see right there. And uh, even this, the reason I like this one is it's not uh, overpriced at all. It's very portable. It's, it connects via USB. Uh, actually, what I can do for you is uh, go into just a slightly bigger uh, screen share so you can actually see it. Let me just, uh, if I unplug it, I can show it to you. Uh, so this is the iKai Professional LPK25. Uh, it's, it's really good. As you can see, it's not, it's not huge. It's just got a few notes on, but you can do, you can, not over there, over here, you've got the octave buttons. So you can go up and down an octave. Uh, you've got a sustain program. You can tap the tempo uh, and uh, it's got a, an arpeggiator as well on it. So uh, you can do all of that stuff with it. Um, and it's designed not only for using with your, your primary door at, at home, but you could also plug this, from what I understand, into um, a tablet, uh, like for instance, an iPad, using the camera conversion kit. Uh, and then you can start jamming away into whatever your uh, your music creator uh, piece of software is there. Um, but I was showing you on the screen, as you can see here, it's uh, it's picking up the velocity on the notes, so how hard I push the keys, and it's recording that data as well. So uh, all round, it really won't break the bank, and uh, even if you just want to start off like jamming on it, it's better than musical typing. <laughs> I think it's better than music typing. Um. What is musical typing? Good question, I'm glad you asked. Um, so in window here, we've got um, an option in Logic. I think this is exclusive to Logic. I haven't seen this in uh, many other doors. Show musical typing here, or Command K, and it brings up a little keyboard here. And actually, you can, if you like, use your keyboard on a Mac as 
<laughs> as a keyboard, which is uh, which is really nice, isn't it? So, da da, there you go. But um, yeah, I I just think it's nicer if you can to uh, to grab yourself a little uh, USB MIDI interface to um, to do that if you wish. So I hope that answers your question there, Runnermeister. Trance Life Radio is in. Nice to see you play with Logic Pro. For me, it was a high learning curve. It is, and I. I have to say, I started life with, um, before Logic, I was messing about before, obviously I was working all the time in Adobe Audition, and then I started to use GarageBand, GarageBand, on the Mac, because it became free, so you could get all that, the you know, the old iLife bundle uh, and everything, so I started to play with GarageBand, and uh, I thought, hey, this is actually pretty cool, I certainly wouldn't make, uh, you know, sweepers and bumpers and produce podcasts in it. But uh, for what it can do with music, I really like it. And then I got so into GarageBand that I was like, I need to get Logic Pro. And <laughs> and here I am now uh, into Logic Pro and, uh, yeah, doing my best to learn a little bit of music. But for those of you that aren't up on music theory, uh, like myself, uh, there are helpful little tools inside Logic Pro uh, that will just help you to um, to create music. And I wanted to show you that in the next section. Uh, so just rounding off these comments here, uh, Cosmic Gate featuring Emma Hewitt. Great, and saw them at Electronic Family in the Netherlands. Wow. Right, I'm going to write down Cosmic Gate <laughs> in, me, uh, in me diary. Where is it? There it is. 2017, 2017, always good to keep a, a journal of things you like. And I always really appreciate it when, when you mention something on the stream because I, I take your information very seriously because I think you and I have got very similar tastes. So Cosmic, Cosmic Gate, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn it up to 11 after I finish this stream in about uh, 22 minutes and uh, I'll let you know what I think about it, okay? Emma Hewitt. I've heard the name, but uh, yeah... It's not not ringing too many bells. I'll probably listen to it and recognize it, but there you go. Uh, what else have we got? Uh, the iKai converts MIDI to USB. So thanks for that, Caddo. Um, <laughs> and Renato is getting in there with the answers as well. It's awesome that uh, you, you, the, the, the regulars, the awesome regulars are, uh, are helping out with some answers there. Uh, can you tell us when MIDI was introduced? Gosh, this is getting very geeky in the chat right now. <laughs> <laughs> MIDI equals musical instrument digital interface. Nice. Uh, that's cool. Um, Mikhail, hi, I'm following from Aruba. Nice and warm out there, I guess. Great job. Um, and uh, Don LeBlanc says 1983 is when MIDI was invented. This, this, this show in the community here, it's just a wealth of learning, isn't it, in the, uh, the musical and sound production <laughs> industry. I love doing this show so much for that reason. Uh, so let's uh, let's get back over to uh, Logic and take a look. So I wanted to show you this um, because what you can do, let's just mute our drummer out and uh, let's start not with a synth, not with alchemy. Let's go to the library and, and grab a piano uh, so we can just uh, be traditional. So there we go, grand piano. And um, what you can do here if we create a MIDI region and make it rather huge like that, or um, let's make it up to there, okay. Um, and now I can go to scale quantize, and this is really helpful if uh, you don't know your, your chords and you know where you should be placing music to make it sound good, particularly if you want to generate some chords, okay. Um, so scale quantize, I can say, okay, yeah, I want this to be uh, in F sharp and I'd like it to be minor, okay, F sharp minor. Uh, and then what it's going to do when I select, for instance, the, uh, the brush tool here, the brush tool will now only allow me to place, oh, another thing I should do is time quantize it uh, to one one note, like so. That will only allow me now to place notes on F sharp minor, which I think is pretty awesome. So we can do that, that, and that. And you get a chord in F sharp minor. So you don't have to know what F sharp minor is or all of your music theory, um, but Logic will will do that for you. So I think this is a really cool feature. So down here, scale quantize, uh, you choose the, uh, uh, the whether you want it to be major or minor uh, and the key, and then obviously time quantize uh, to get these lovely long chords. 
So, so then we'll go back to the start, hitting enter. And already you are creating chords in F sharp minor, which uh, is amazing. And then we'll do that. So as you can see, it's skipping notes. It will not allow me to place a note where it shouldn't be. So you won't get anything that sounds off. Okay, and then finally, let's try that from the start and have a listen. And let's uh, loop it round, see how it works. Thanks, Caddo. <laughs> Simon Cowell's on hold. I'll tell him you're busy. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, Caddo makes me laugh so much during this show. <laughs> uh, <okay. laughs> Keep it together, Mike. Keep it together. <laughs> oh, dear. I, I, I need a holiday. <laughs> <laughs> right, so we've got our um, we've got our chords there now on the grand piano. Uh, but say we wanted to uh, now change this from a grand piano into a kind of trancey sound. So I'm going to go for the synthesizer, and we'll go for a uh, let's have a look at a, a lead synthesizer and see what kind of sound we've got here. Oh wow, that's weird, isn't it? Very weird. Let's go for something else, maybe uh, classics. Let's have a listen to the classics. So we can just go through these until we find something we like. Something else. Let's go for EDM bass. Uh, EDM chord. Whoa, that's weird, isn't it? And then we'll bring in the, uh, the music bed uh, with the beat. And let's actually change that drummer up. Let's see whether we can find a, a different drummer here. Um, we'll go for uh, maybe some dubstep. Let's have a listen to that, see how it sounds. And maybe bring that down in the mix a little bit and loop it out like so. Okay, so that's cool. And uh, then uh, we can add in another track here. So again, it's going to be a software instrument. And uh, we're going to go for, uh, let's go for the, um, actually, let's just create that. And then go into our library here. Um, because what I would like here is we'll go back to the piano again, the grand piano on this one. And we'll create an empty MIDI region. And here, we'll just drag that right out. Uh, say, for instance, uh, we'll make this uh, here. Now, what I can do is I can change the, uh, the note length here. Uh, so let's do this. And then again, as long as the scale quantize is on, we can do something like this. Oh, that's still a synth, isn't it? Why is that not a grand piano? Oh, I know why, because I changed the, uh, the wrong thing. Uh, so let's put that back to synthesizer. Where were we? Was it EDM bass or classics? What were we looking for here? Ah, I've lost my awesome preset. Where was it? Might have to start again. Might have to go with that instead. Or that. And then over here, um, this I wanted to be the grand piano. So let's go over here, piano. Okay, cool. So uh, now we can just start painting on notes again. With the scale quantize, we are going to get a wonderful. Let me get rid of those. And we can change the length of some of these notes. So um, let's do something like this and just see how it sounds. Okay. 
so obviously not that amazing yet. So we can have something like that and then select, whoops, don't want to do that, uh, then select it using the pointer tool and loop it over like so, like that and then like that and then like this. So then we can have this. And maybe just at the end, we'll um, get our little brush again. Where's the brush tool? Here we go. Um, And maybe go then into something else uh, like a synth and we'll have a look at some of the lead synths. And if I want I can loop this round. But actually it's already looping up there, I've got that switched on. And that could build up into something else. But as you can see, very, very easily, you can uh, you can start creating music uh, and have it all sounding in the right key and everything. And uh, your BPM is here as well. So if I wanted to take the BPM down to 120, this will automatically change everything there to 120 BPM. Hear how it slows down now? Should actually change that key signature, shouldn't I? So there you go, that's the, the start of something, and we can go and we can drag other elements into that in just a moment. But we're, uh, we're getting into the last uh, just under 15 minutes of the show now, uh, so it's always good to mention your comments. Uh, Nahira is there, I want you to do a jingle for my station, I'm from Ghana. Uh, hello to you, uh, do reach out to us, musicradiocreative.com is the place to go and get in touch. That's the, definitely the best thing to do. Uh, also, Damien is there, a big hello from Hayes. Hayes. Hayes in the United Kingdom? Is that what you're watching? That's awesome. Uh, what have we got here? Wow, wow. Let's go through the uh, the live chat. Um, so we've got, yes, uh, debating when uh, MIDI first came into Pete. That's awesome. Don and Caddo and Renato there talking about MIDI uh, in the chat. Uh, let's see. What else have we got here? Uh, uh, we've got, uh, let's see. <laughs> There's a lot of in chat here. I need a producer <laughs> to pick out those nuggets. Uh, we've got uh, Don, you're having way too much fun, Mike, but that's the point. Absolutely. That is the point, just to have fun and make good audio. And what I'm thinking of doing uh, with some of this, uh, this stuff in Logic, and I did mention it uh, briefly on the show last week, is that I'm thinking of creating an online radio station that streams live via YouTube. Um, so rather than going the traditional route of, uh, you know, buying a host uh, and needing loads of bandwidth and paying lots of money, I was thinking of streaming once out to YouTube and then uh, using their rather wonderful uh, YouTube live feature, as, as I used to do this show, uh, to create uh, an amazing uh, sounding radio station um, and I could do that actually um, by let me let me show you something actually if we go back to the um, to my screen share the reason why I'm thinking about this is if you look at YouTube if you type radio in these days into YouTube you will see the top uh, one two three four five results are all live streams now the best thing about this and look at the number of subscribers they have this one has 400,000 subscribers with 1,200 watching uh, the good life 24-7 uh, deep house and tropical house uh, has 5,300 uh, people listening to that stream right now so uh, 
you know, plenty of space to get uh, a lot of listeners to your online station without having to pay for the bandwidth. Um, and I've seen them doing all kinds of good stuff on these streams, uh, like using uh, chatbots and bits like that. So I think uh, real potential is there to explore YouTube Live for internet radio. And uh, I'm going to figure it out. Obviously, there's the problem with copyright, and I don't want to break any rules. That's why I'm going to create original stuff inside Logic and see how we go with that. And I don't know, maybe if, uh, if you're interested in that, uh, and you'd, you'd like to consider creating some stuff for an online station, maybe we can create something inside the community to sort of submit ideas and submit tracks to the station that we can play uh, with all the right permissions, uh, rather than music licensing, as I mentioned before, is a lot of money. So uh, yeah, really considering that, and I will keep you up to date with how the project goes, but you can see yeah, most of the results here are coming in as live now radio streams. So I was thinking, yeah, in Logic, we can create some nice stuff uh, and then put it up onto a, a live stream that goes round and round and, uh, and hopefully get some people listening in as well. Uh, what else? Oh, Caddo's uh, asking, are you able to send the files to Adobe Audition? Uh, yes, absolutely. And the way I do that is go into File, Export, uh, All Tracks as Audio Files, uh, or you can do the um, One Track as an Audio File. But if you do All Tracks as Audio Files here, and I'll just put it into the Downloads folder, Export, it's just going to like go through bouncing it like that uh, and go off into infinity before it finishes. While it's doing that, Thanks, Gatto, for posting the uh, the contact email address. Uh, Joshua wants to know, do I use FL Studio as well? No, I don't. I've had a little play with it. I know lots of cool producers like Avicii use FL Studio, but uh, obviously I don't have a Windows machine, so uh, I don't use it myself. Um, and, yeah, Kato is saying a uh, good thing, more ear, less gear. That's right. You don't need great gear to make great sounds. Um, Jenny has a theme tune idea. Oh, wow. Cool. Um, <laughs> killer gamers. I love you, man. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. So now that's all uh, bounced down. Actually, I do have Audition open over here. And I can show you in my downloads folder. I've got all the individual stems in IF uh, format, which is Apple's proprietary format, and I can just drag those in like that. And there are all my samples. So we've got this one. And the pile driver, which... That's obviously my dubstep beat, and then chill out. These are the chords there. Don't they look beautiful, especially in spectral? And if I go into multi-track, and we'll say new track, and drag these all into Audition. Uh, oh, hang on. No. Let's create it without my template. Otherwise, we'll get all kinds of processing on those instruments, which I don't really want at this stage. New, new track. Okay. And drag them in over here. Oh, doesn't that look pretty? There's my original track. Probably need to do something with the, uh, the volume control there. Very hypnotic, if you ask me. So you can do your Adobe thing over here in Adobe Audition, which is fantastic. Uh, just looking in at the chat again, uh, I like that cat because I've got big ears. <laughs> Don, you guys, you guys have got to stop making me laugh. Yeah, I've got to hold it together for an hour. If you crack me up, like it's a very hot studio in here, I can literally overheat live on the air. <laughs> Which might be good for you. I don't know. Uh, Lawrence, great idea about the radio station, Mike. Let's do it. Hope we can have a discussion about it in the community. Yes, Lawrence, hop over there into the community at community.musicradiocreative.com uh, and uh, and hop in and, yeah, start a new thread up and, uh, you know, let us know what your thoughts are. Really useful streams for beginners. I have much better understanding. Thanks, Killer Games. Uh, no MIDI control, unfortunately, in Adobe Audition, I'm afraid. No. No. Nothing. Nothing we can do about that. Uh, just hope that maybe they will uh, bring it in. And Cato's posted the link to the community as well, so go over there, community.musicradiocreative.com. Uh, that chill radio 24-7 one with Marge Simpson is amazing. Is it really? Let's have a look. Oh, chill radio 24-7. 440 people listening. Let's go into it and see what they're up to here. Chill radio. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm not going to play too much of that because I'm not sure about the legalities of playing animated Simpsons gifs. <laughs> so, I, don't, I don't know, you know, but each to their own. I mean, 
I'm really interested to see how YouTube are going to deal with this because I bet you, um, I'm not saying this radio station is doing anything wrong, uh, but I, I bet you there will be some people that won't follow the rules by the, uh, you know, the letter of the law, shall we say. Um, and I don't know how YouTube can enforce that. Not sure yet. Um, but obviously, yeah. I want to set something up uh, that fits in with the rules so that it stays forever, doesn't get shut down. Um, we've got, yeah, stuff here. You see, a lot of people are encouraging people to go off and see their social media. Uh, they tell the genres they play. Every station I've seen on YouTube seems to be playing lo-fi hip-hop. <laughs> It's the thing. I think people just like, uh, probably where the market is here is people stick these on when they're working and when they're studying. And so they don't want something that's too in the face. So maybe you don't want to do EDM, um, but something like, uh, you know, something chilled, something, something like this, I think would fit in really well on the new MRC.FM, don't you? Yeah? You, you could imagine like, you know, writing up a paper to this or you know, reading a book while this is playing in the background, right? It's not too busy. And that's kind of what I'm thinking here. So this is an on... You'll see this project develop if you stick with the live stream over the coming uh, weeks and months. Uh, you will see this uh, develop and we'll chat in the community forum as well about it. Um, they use something called Discord, which I've been looking into. It's chat for gamers. Um, night mode. Oh, yeah, someone was talking about this earlier. Night mode on YouTube. Oh, doesn't that look amazing? Wow. Hands up who's watching my stream right now in dark mode, because that's epic. And it kind of pops out the chat, so it makes a feature of the chat here. I've also seen uh, YouTube live radio stations uh, doing things where um, you can use like a bot. I think um, you put an exclamation mark before your comment, and then you can like publish something on the uh, on the live video or you can get a shout out or something or you can choose a song request so I need to look into all that kind of stuff maybe the best thing is for us after the show uh, to start a discussion over at community.musicradiocreative.com because I'm sure I'm not the only person in the world who's thinking about their own online station on YouTube it's brilliant because again I'll say it again the bandwidth requirement is not high all you need to do is stream it out once to YouTube's RTMP server, and then they take care of sending it to 400, 1,000, 3,000 people, which is great because uh, in the past you, um, you had to have the bandwidth to manage anyone who wanted to tune in. So I don't know how YouTube are going to make money from this, so that's another thing. But anyway, may as well go over. And thank you, Caddo's posted the link to Discord. I'm going to have to get on that because apparently it's it's better than Skype, <laughs> a lot of people are saying. So I'm looking into that. What else have we got just before I go then? Uh, this is fantastic. Thank you also for sending me an email. Otherwise, I wouldn't have known. Oh, it's absolutely my pleasure. I hope you'll be back for a, a future stream, Falami. Make sure to uh, hit the subscribe button if you haven't done so already. I've made a movie before, so I use a lot of editing. Uh, uh, not feature, it's a short, so I'm learning more things. That's awesome. Caddo says DRM is dead. Yeah, really. That's uh, an interesting topic for another time. But uh, yeah, it's been really good to be with you today. I've really enjoyed this session. And hopefully you've, you've taken a, a couple of things away from this. Main thing I wanted you to know is that you can use Apple Loops to really easily, that's the first step to creating music in Logic Pro or GarageBand. You can drop Apple Loops in, they all come in in the same BPM and the same key, mix them together, find out what works, you've got your own song. Uh, you can use it copyright free there. Usage terms are pretty good. As long as you're not reselling them as loops, you're covered. And then if you do want to create your own stuff to resell as loops without any worry, uh, you've seen that that cool little hack where you can just go into Logic and you can use the scale quantize, the time quantize, uh, get it all sounding right and in key, and boom, within a few uh, minutes, you can have the uh, formations at the start of a music track. But that is it for today. It's been my pleasure to be here. I'm here every weekday from 2pm till 3pm UK time. So do make sure to subscribe and join me and I'll try and ping out a few reminders as well uh, so we can build this community. Uh, but outside of this live stream, I will chat to you over at community.musicradiocreative.com. Music